And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 6th. One storm active right now, Cristobal, back to tropical storm status and about to cross the Gulf of Mexico. June 6, 2020, day 158 of the year so far, and it is the only active storm, two of them uh, in the east there that have died off. Day 6 of Atlantic hurricane season, Cristobal moving over the Gulf of Mexico now and likely to intensify before striking the coast of the United States, tropical storm warnings from Louisiana to Florida. In the eastern Pacific, nothing going on here at this point. Day 23 of hurricane season and no real signs of anything developing anytime soon. Of course, we had Amanda. That was very short-lived and partially evolved into Cristobal in the first place. Remarkably, the Nisaga remnants and the remnants of 92A are still traceable. Nisaga over Nepal at this point, uh, pretty much reaching the uh, Himalayan Alps and 92A about to reach Djibouti. In the Southern Hemisphere, nothing going on here. 2019-20 Southern Hemisphere animations are expected in the next two weeks or so. Cristobal is currently located off the northwestern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula with 40 mile an hour winds, a pressure around 998 millibars. It's 109 miles northwest of Merida, 22.2 north, 90.6 degrees west. The storm is expected to maintain its intensity now and probably be stronger by the time it makes landfall. We are now on board with what a lot of the models are saying, a 60 mile an hour landfall along with the National Hurricane Center. It will really shoot up towards the north there as we get towards day three to day five. So it's not going to be a huge rainmaker like it has been over Mexico, but we could still be looking at 10 inches of rain for some areas, particularly just east of the landfall zone and possibly even in parts of Florida. Uh, indeed, Florida is getting a lot of rainfall right now. You can see the wide Atlantic here, not much else going on, but Cristobal really stealing the show, um, a very large system um, and you know, not looking too bad on that visible satellite imagery, although it's so broad, it is somewhat weak in terms of wind speed, but obviously the potential with its such large influence, um, don't underestimate this storm by any means at all. In the eastern Pacific, you can see its influence extending all the way down to the intertropical convergence zone there, and a potential area of interest which we had marked yesterday, we've taken it off now because we don't think it's even worth the 10% at this point. The Western Pacific looking rather quiet. You can see again what is um, some remnants of a swirl there, something or other that's trying to form. It's not going to, although models are hinting that there could be a little bit of development on the horizon. Uh, certainly in the Pacific, June is the time that it starts to wake up, contrary to popular belief. The South Pacific is looking very quiet, as you'd expect. Uh, some interesting model runs though, uh, suggesting that there could be a borderline subtropical cyclone south of Fiji, but it will probably be extra tropical. Uh, and in the Indian Ocean you can see the remnants of those two systems, very little left of them now, uh, but you can see them there nonetheless. We're still keeping tabs on them, still delivering uh, heavy rain to localised areas. Sea surface temperatures off the uh, Pacific coastline, very warm in the main tropical zone, still has work to do elsewhere. The Atlantic, pretty cool in the Gulf of Mexico compared to what it used to be, but still around 27 degrees Celsius, so certainly warm enough for sustained development and strengthening, but because uh, Cristobal is so large, uh, it will be slow development. 30 degrees plus in the Indian Ocean and in the Pacific, the Western Pacific that is, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius generally, and even warmer in the South China Sea, heading for 32 degrees there, just west of the Philippine Islands. Here's the anomalies. You can still see that La Nina in effect there, which is just about extending into the Western Pacific. Generally though, in the areas that we're watching right now, we have above average anomalies. Here's Tropical Storm Cristobal and how it's been progressing over the course of today. Um, somewhat difficult to get a center fix on this because of the rotation area is so large, but you can obviously see that it is rotating. Uh, it's going to be one of those storms that churns up and it might even do one or two little loop -de loops before it reaches the coastline uh, as one or two models are suggesting or maybe it will just go for a quick pass all the way up there now uh, we'll wait and see um, as for landfall location um, you can 
here's something very interesting to note. The western side, as you can see, looking very bereft of any real activity. That's going to remain the case all the way up until landfall. It's the eastern side of this storm, if you get caught up on it on the eastern side. It's where the main effects of this storm are going to be felt. So you're talking anywhere east of central Louisiana, which is where we think the landfall zone is probably going to be. Um, some outlier models there calling for borderline hurricane status, but it doesn't look likely. HWRF going with 65 miles per hour, that is possible. Wind shear will be dropping to around the 10 knots range um, before really rising after landfall, that is. Um, and again, you can see those track forecasts, uh, quite a few of them taking it almost directly over New Orleans, and some of them actually doing so. Sea surface temperatures remaining warm, as we've said. Relative humidity will start to decline. This is the HWRF run. You can see the green area there. That's tropical storm conditions over a very large area all the way into Florida. That's why the tropical storm warnings extend that far east. And the HMON there calling for something similar. It will still have tropical storm force winds when it reaches the Great Lakes. Well, going back to June the 6th, 1929, it was the last time that three systems were active on this day, believe it or not. Uh, the remnants of a cyclone off the east coast of Australia and two tropical storms running up the coast there. Um, 5W striking Japan at this point, Kyushu, and 6W behind it over Miyakojima. So Cristobal, the only named storm that is active right now. The next name on the Atlantic naming list is Dolly. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Boris. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. Over in the Western Pacific, Nuri is the next name on list three. And in the North Indian Ocean, on that brand new first list, that will hopefully last for many, many years, the next name is Gatti. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in Australia is Imogen. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, if we get a new storm before the end of this month, it will be called Kundai. In Fiji, the next name is Yolanda. That's all for tonight. We'll be back with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow, if we're not live. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash Force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month, You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.